All right, y'all, like I said, 7.4, dealing with quadratic equations. So basically, there's three ways to solve quadratic equations. You can solve them by factoring. Solve them by taking square roots. And the third method that works every time is the quadratic formula. So let me let everybody in. So today we're going to focus mainly on the quadratic formula because it'll solve any quadratic equation and it'll give me real solutions and imaginary solutions. Okay. So let me give you a few definitions first. So now, instead of saying find the solutions to the quadratic equations, they might use terminology like find the zeros of the quadratic solutions. Well, y'all, that is the same thing. So when I talk about a zero, I'm talking about solutions to a quadratic equation that are found by setting the equation equal to zero. So since you set them equal to zero, that's why they're called zeros technically for the solutions, okay? Now, the reason we set them equal to zero is because of what we call the zero product rule. And y'all, the zero product rule says if A times B equals zero, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. So zero is the only number that I can guarantee that one of these factors has to be equal to zero. So that's why we're able to set equations equal to zero and solve for them, okay? Now, we're going to be using the quadratic formula today. All right, y'all, let me let some in real quick. All righty. So we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve our equations today, okay? So the quadratic equation... Or how about the quadratic formula? So the quadratic formula can be used to find the solutions or zeros of any, let me let one in, of any quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. So if I've got my quadratic equation in descending order equal to zero, then the solutions can be given by the formula so y'all I don't know how long it's been since y'all used this thing but here we go x equals negative b 
plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all to that over 2 times a. So if you're very weak at factoring, this is what you got to use to find your two answers. And we get the two answers because of that plus or minus in front of that radical. And y'all, the reason there's a plus or minus in front of that square root radical, because remember, take a number like four. What's the square root of four? Well, the square root of four is two. That's what we call the principal square root because two times two equals four. But remember, negative two is also a square root of four because negative two times negative two equals a positive four. So that's why we got to use the plus or minus in front of these radicals, okay? All right, so y'all probably seen this before. So we're going to, every equation I solved today for 7.4, I'm using this quadratic equation. Now, that negative is always in the formula. The four is always in the formula. And that two on the bottom is always in the formula. A is whatever number's in front of the x squared term. Then you got B in here twice. B is whatever number's in front of the X term. And then you got C over here. C will be that last number, okay? So we figure out our numbers, plug them in, and then it's just simplifying that formula down. And I will say, the trickiest part of the quadratic formula is going to be simplifying that radical down, okay? So I'll try to remind y'all how to simplify the radical when we hit that point of this. So y'all, let's start some of these homework problems and I'll show you how you're going to solve these and get both answers. So this one says, find the zeros of the following function. Now, my function is f of c equals c squared plus 6c plus 8. Now, this one you could factor. Factors of 8 that equals 6 would be 4 and 2. And then you would set them equal to 0. But y'all, they don't want us to factor. They want us to play with this quadratic formula. Because like I said, it'll solve every single one of these. So what I'm going to do is take that C squared plus 6C plus 8. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. And I'm going to figure out what my three numbers are. So there's no number in front of the C squared. Anytime there's not a number in front of your variable, you're going to treat that like a 1. So A is 1. B will be the 6. C will be the 8. So I've got my three numbers. I'm going to start plugging them into my formula. So X equals, now remember, that negative is always in the formula. So write that negative. And then my B I'm putting in is a positive 6. Then I got plus or minus. So if you notice, that negative's only purpose was to change that 6 from a positive to a negative, okay? Now we got B squared. That'll be 6 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, and C, which is 8. All of that over 2 times A, which is 1. So now we just start simplifying it. Bring down that negative 6. Can't do nothing with that. Plus or minus. Like I said, most of our work is going to be on this radical. So under the radical, I have 6 squared, which is 36. And y'all look here. 
this whole right side under that radical, all this stuff is getting multiplied together. There's only one negative, so it's going to stay negative. So negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times eight makes that a negative 32. All over two times one, which is two. All right. So we're sort of stuck on the outside until we finish all this radical stuff. So bring down that negative six. Plus or minus. All right, we got a square root underneath. 36 minus 32 gives us a four all over two. All right, y'all, so guess what the next step is? We got to figure out that square root of four if we can simplify that radical or not. So we bring down our negative six plus or minus. Well, this four is a perfect square. That means it all comes out of that radical. And the square root of four is two. All of that over two. Now notice this. Once I took that square root and four had a perfect square, the radical's gone. I just used it changing that four into a two. Now, both these numbers on top need to divide by the two, okay? So remember, that two is affected by both parts of that numerator. So negative three divided, I mean, negative six divided by negative two gives me a negative three plus or minus. And then two divided by two is a one. That's as far as I can simplify it. So let me show you how I'm going to get my first answer. And then my second answer. You know, like I said, the plus or minus is how I'm going to get to two answers. The first time you add to one. So you're going to do negative three plus one. So negative three plus one. That's going to give me my first answer. And y'all, what's that? A uh, negative uh, two. So the first zero is negative two. Now to get my second answer, I'm going to do negative three. Minus one. Well, negative three minus one gives us a negative four. All right, y'all. So that means in math lab, it'll say the solutions are and then you'll put in the box uh negative two, comma negative four, or negative four, negative two, order don't matter on that, okay? So that bring back memories on this quadratic formula? <laughs> and y'all, the trick is getting everything on one side equal to zero, and then just simplifying this. But I pretty much work it the same way every time, okay? And like I said, the biggest part of this is the radical stuff. So y'all, questions on that? All right, so I'm going to do another one now then. Actually, I got about five or six of these in seven, four. So how about find the zeros of f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 4. <clears throat> now, like I said, that first one could have been done by factoring, but this one you cannot factor. This one will not factor. So our only choice is to use our quadratic formula. So remember, I'm going to set it equal to 0. We're going to find our three numbers, A, B, and C. So once again, there's no number in the front, so that means A is a 1. B this time is a negative 2. And C is a negative 4. Now, y'all, I'll write the formula back here so that we got that. 
So negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So keep your formula handy. So X will equal negative. Now this time my B is a negative 2, so I'm going to put that negative 2 in parentheses. And then I got my plus or minus square root b squared. That's going to be negative 2 squared. So I'm going to put that negative 2 in parentheses. Minus 4 times my a, which is 1, and my c, which is negative 4. All of that over 2 times 1 which is my A. All right, so your first step, getting that stuff plugged in. Your uh, A is the ones, B was the negative two, and C was the negative four. Now remember, at this point, all we're doing is simplifying that, okay? But this one's going to have a little kink when we hit the radical, and I'll show you when we get there. First of all, negative times negative makes that a positive two in the front plus or minus square root. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a 4. And y'all look at this side this time. All this stuff on the right side is getting multiplied. We got two negatives. Those two negatives are going to make that a positive. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 4 makes that a positive 16. On the bottom, 2 times 1 is 2. So the only other thing I can do now is work my radicals. So remember, 4 plus 16, that's going to give me a 2 plus or minus square root of 20 all over 2. So y'all, are y'all familiar with simplifying these radicals? Because on the side, I've got to simplify that square root of 20. So here's the thing about simplifying a radical. You cannot have numbers under the radical if they have factors that are what we call perfect squares. Now, I'm going to write some perfect squares over here. And y'all keep up with these perfect squares when you got to simplify these radicals. Now, the first perfect square, 1 times 1, that's not helping me. So, 4, which is 2 times 2, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, uh, 121, and I guess we're in Arkansas, so I'll stop at 144. These are perfect squares. If I took the square root of 4, I'd get a 2. Square root of 9, I'd get a 3. Square root of 16 would give me a 4, and so on, okay? If these numbers under the radical have any of these factors, we got to break them out, and I'll show you how to break them out. So first of all, does the 20 have a factor over here? We well, all guess what? That very first number is a factor of 20, right? So what we can do, we can rewrite this radical using the 4, which was our perfect square, and 5. Notice, under these radicals, 4 times 5 still equals 20. But y'all, why not pick the 4? Because the 4 is a perfect square, which means it has a square root. So the square root of 4 would be 2. Can't do nothing with the square root of 5, so we bring it down. So what we want to do now is replace this square root of 20 with that 2 square root of 5. 
So that'll give us two plus or minus two square root of five all over two. Now, we can even simplify this further. Now, we're going to divide both of these twos by the two. We don't worry about what's under the radical. Stuff under a radical cannot divide by stuff that's not under a radical. So when you simplify these, it's got to be these three outside numbers that you're dividing. So this will simplify. Two divided by two gives me one plus or minus. These twos cancel. So all that's left is your square root of five. Now, Math Lab will let you write this as one answer using the plus or minus, or if you wanted to break it up, your first answer. Whoop, let me let one back in. Your first answer would be one plus square root of five. And y'all, that can't be simplified because these are not like terms. And then your second answer would be one minus square root of five. So these are what we call exact answers because they got the radicals. Now I will do some in a little bit and they'll say, hey, give us the exact answer, which is using the radical, or give us an approximation, which is decimal form, okay? Because um, numbers like square root of five, they're never ending decimals, so that's why they'll have us approximate, okay? So, y'all ain't gonna lie, some of the tricks on these is just simplifying that radical there. And y'all make sure you keep up with these perfect squares over here, okay? All right, let's watch this one. Find the zeros. Of now, this one already has it equal to zero. It's got x squared plus 5x minus 7, all equal to zero. So I'm going to find a, b, and c. So A in front of the X squared, there's no number, so it's automatically a one. B is a positive five, and C is a negative seven. So we got our numbers, now we're plugging it into our formula. X equals negative B, which is a five, plus or minus square root well, b squared will be 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is negative 7. All over 2 times a, which is 1. All right, y'all, so let me rewrite this because I sort of small at this end. It's negative 5 plus or minus the square root, 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7 all over 2 times 1. All right, can't do nothing with the negative 5. Bring that down. Plus or minus square root. All right, so 5 squared to be 5 times 5, which is 25. All right, I'm looking at this right side being multiplied. There's two negatives, so that's going to make that a positive. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28. All of that over 2. All right, so remember, my next step now is to add up under my radical to get that added. So bring down your negative 5 plus or minus, oh, let's see, 25 and 28, that's like 53, 
all of this over two. So y'all, just like we'll go up here with that 20, I'm now at the point where I need to see if I can simplify that square root of 53. So on the side, I'm going to try to simplify square root of 53. But remember, it's got to have one of these perfect squares as a factor of that 53. Okay? And y'all, let's see. 53 does not have 4 as a factor. It will not divide by 9. It does not divide by 16. It does not divide by 25. And my numbers are starting to get too big. It won't divide by 36, 49. Everything else is too big. So this 53 does not have a factor that's one of these perfect squares. So since it does not have a factor that's a perfect square, this thing does not simplify. Since that does not simplify, this is my final answer. Now, in math lab, you can write it like this with a plus or minus. Now, if you wrote it as two answers, you'd have negative 5 plus square root of 53 over 2, comma, negative 5 minus square root of 53 over 2. So I usually write it once because that's a lot of stuff to write. So let me show you. In math lab, the first tool you want to pick is the fraction. So pick the fraction first. Once you pick the fraction, then you can put in your negative 5 plus or minus the square root, put in your 53, then arrow down to the bottom and put in the 2. But y'all, the, the fraction has to be the first thing you pick when you're putting in that answer, okay? All right, a question on that one. So notice. Does this uh, radical simplify like this one, or does it not simplify? Okay. Can you write the? Can I do what now? Can you write the fraction out? Oh, this one you don't have to split up into fractions. Now, if they have imaginary answers. On those ones, we will split apart, okay? And that's my next one's going to have something doing that. Oh, you want me to write the two fractions out of this answer? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So the first answer would be negative 5 plus square root of 53 over 2. And then your second answer would be negative 5 minus square root of 53 over 2. So notice the only difference in these two answers is the adding and the subtracting. And that's from this uh, square root stuff, okay? I got a quick question. Yeah, I hear you. So for where you have the problem where it says x equals negative 5, and you have the square root 5 to the second power minus 4. When did you get that minus 4 from again? Oh, right here? Yeah. Well, check this out. Let me bring that formula down right here. You see this formula? Yeah. That negative 4 is in there every time. And that 2 on the bottom is there every time. So since it's in the formula, we got to use that every time. The only oh, things okay. uh -huh, the only things we're having to figure out are what the B, A, and C stuff is. So okay. we're going to put in what? One, two, three, four. We're basically putting in five numbers, but two of them are repeats, like the B to B here and the A and the A here. But hey, right. that four and that two are there every time, okay? All right, y'all, so let me move this back up. All righty, so 
This next one we do is I'm going to show you what you got to do when you got imaginary answers. Um, so we're going to find the zeros of f of x equals 3x squared minus an x plus a 4. All right, and I'm going to write the formula one more time on this page. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, let's take this set it equal to zero. So I guess the best thing I need to do for y'all right now is have one of y'all tell me what are A, B, and C going to be. So anybody want to volunteer to tell me A, B, and C? What in? I dang. Let me see. <laughs> Um, what in A, huh? Is it gonna be three x to the square? I mean, to the uh -huh, second power. All I want is that three. Because remember, all we need is the numbers. We don't need the variables. Okay. So B is just a negative here. So what would y'all put for B? Negative one. Negative one. And then of course C has to be zero. Oh, four. Four, uh huh. That four at the end. Okay. So notice, you don't need the variables because we're actually solving for x's, and this formula accounts for their places in this lineup, okay? So we're going to plug everything in. So here we go. x equals negative. So my b is a negative 1, so I'm going to put that in parentheses. Plus or minus our square root is negative 1 squared. Minus 4, and then times A, which is 3, and my C, which is a 4. All of that will be over 2 times that 3. So y'all with me on this one? Um, now you're, you're seeing that that 4 and 3 are actually coming from here, right? Right. Okay. All right, y'all, so here we go. Two negatives, make that a positive one in the front. So like I said, this negative in front of the B up here, all it did is it changed this negative B into a positive one. And that's really its only purpose. Then I got my plus or minus. So let's see. Ooh, negative one squared. So the negative one times negative one will make that a positive one. And any number you squared that's right here, B squared will always be positive, okay? Now, y'all look at this. I'm about to multiply all this stuff on the right side right here. There's one negative, so it's going to stay negative. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times 4 makes that a negative. 48. Uh-huh. And then all that over, 2 times 3 which give me a six. All right, so I'm coming down. I got to work under the radical again, but y'all look at this. I'm getting one plus or minus. Well, one minus 47, that's like a negative 47. All of that over six. I meant one minus 48. I think I said one minus 47, but <laughs> one minus 48. <laughs> So look, we cannot do nothing else until we see if we can simplify this radical. Now, y'all, before I simplify this radical, let me recall y'all on something. In math, when we get a square root of negative one, you can't take the square root of a negative number because like signs are always going to make that positive. So what we do, since we can't take the square roots of negative numbers, 
we got a definition where if we get the square root of negative one, we're going to replace that with that little i. This now means that this is an imaginary number because we can't take square roots of negative numbers in the real world. So that's imaginary numbers. Okay. Now, anytime you see that I, it's really a square root of negative one, but this is sort of like, oh, what would you say? Shorthand for it, okay? So, watch what we're about to do. <coughs> we're going to on the side. We're going to try to simplify that square root of negative 47. Now, remember, my perfect squares... My perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, uh, 25, 36. I can stop at 49 on this one because that's a 47. Mm -hmm. So we would look to see if any of these numbers are factors of 47. Oops. Well, I don't think it is, do y'all? Nope. It ain't divided by none of those. No. Nope. nope. Now, we can't simplify to 47, but y'all, what we got to do we can't leave that negative under that radical. So we're going to rewrite this square root of negative 47 as a square root of negative 1 times a square root of 47. So you got to break that negative out as a square root of negative 1. But y'all, what will I now replace that square root of negative 1 with? We're going to replace it with this little mm -hmm. i right here oh, okay. so that we get an i square root of 47. This is now what we would call an imaginary solution because of that i sitting in front of it. it it's telling me that I tried to take the square root of a negative number, okay? Yes. But remember, a negative times a negative makes a positive. A positive times a positive makes a positive. So there's no way in the real world to take square roots of negative numbers, okay? Yeah. So if the number does not simplify, you at least have to bring out the negative as the I. So we would replace this square root of negative 47 with that. So I get 1 plus or minus I square root of 47 all over six. Now, it's not going to simplify any further since that radical didn't do nothing. So y'all, this one is where they'll say, hey, you'll see something on it that says, write imaginary answers in A plus B I form. Well, what they want me to do is Turn this into two fractions. A is what you would call the real number. And y'all, the B-I is what you would call the imaginary. So together, we call this a complex number. I don't know if y'all have ever heard that lingo. But complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. Well, see, this is all one big fraction. They want me to split it apart. So remember, both of these have to be affected by that six. So to write it as two fractions, I'm going to write this as one over six plus or minus my I square root of 47 over six. Now I've got it separated into the real part and the imaginary part. Now y'all, another way you could write this, if you want to put the I at the end, you could do 1 over 6 plus or minus square root of 47 over 6 and then put your i. But it will take this one either way. So y'all, when y'all see this a plus b i form and you do have imaginary answers, they want them split apart, okay? Okay. All righty, now this next one, when I do it, um, this next one, we're going to find the zeros of 
Now this has already got a zero, so it's 5x squared minus 7x minus 3 equals zero. Now check this out. They want me to write exact solutions and approximations to three decimal places. Now remember, decimal places is after the decimal. Can't count the numbers in front of it, okay? All right, so we got our numbers here. So I'm going to figure out A, B, and C. Once I got them figured out, I'm going to plug them into our formula. So let's see. A is in front of the X squared, so that's going to be a 5. Okay. Uh, B okay. is my... Uh-huh. So negative seven there, and then my C, negative three. negative three. All right, now let's just plug them things in and see what we do. Now, I will say this. To do the approximation part, um, I'm definitely going to be using my calculator, okay? Because oh. you get stuff like square root of five. Well, what's the square root of five? That's going to be two point, who knows, okay? <laughs> um. So, yeah, we're going to have our friend, the calculator, do that part. So, y'all, let's see what we got. Negative B will be negative times that negative 7 plus or minus B squared will be negative 7 squared minus 4. A, what was that, 5? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then C, let's see, negative uh, 3. All right, y'all, all that over two times my five. All right, so now it's just simplifying that down. Once again, the two negatives made that seven positive. And y'all, at this point, this number better be opposite than what it is up here, okay? Then you got your plus or minus. Negative 7 squared is a positive 49. Yep. So at this point, whatever number you have here, better be positive because you're squaring it. Now let's see what's happening over here. All this is getting multiplied again. And y'all, I see two negatives. So those two negatives will make that a positive. That's right. So let's see. Negative 4 and 5 is what? Negative 20. Negative 20 times that negative 3. 60. Uh -huh, so a positive 60 there. All over 2 times 5. 10. Which is our 10. So it looks like I got one more step here before I can try to simplify my radical. So bring down my 7 plus or minus. Um, Let's see, 49 and 60. That's going to give me... 109? Yeah, 109. All over my 10. So now I need to see if I can simplify that on the side here. Square root of 109. All righty, so let's see. Um, Remember, my perfect squares were 4, but that's not dividing by 4. Mm. Um, 9 is not dividing by 9. No. Uh. I don't think it'll divide by any even number, 16 or nothing like that. Uh, 25, no. 36 is even, so it won't do that one. Uh, 49, no, I can get 98 and then a big number. Uh, well, the only things left would be like 64, 81. It ain't dividing by none of this stuff. Nope. So guess what? That radical does not simplify. And it's not negative under there. So since there's not a negative under there and there's no perfect square factors of 109, it is not going to simplify. So right here is my final answer. And this is what we call the exact answer. It's an exact answer because we're using the radical for the square root of 109. Now, 
they want us to get the approximations. So I'm going to have to do this twice to get the two approximations, okay? Because of that plus or minus will be the different ways I get them. So, but for the exact answer, I can use the plus or minus. So now let's approximate this. Guess what? I'm going to the calculator. Um, Because I don't know what the square root of 109. That's going to be like a 10 point. Who knows, okay? So we got our calculators. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is make my fraction by hitting alpha, y equals, and enter. So I got my fraction. So let's find the one being added first. So that would be 7 plus. So the square root is over here on the left side. You hit the second blue button and then the x square button. It'll bring up the radical and put in your 109. Then you're going to arrow down on the bottom and what I have on, I had a 10 on the bottom. Now, when I hit enter, I'm going to get a big decimal answer. Remember, we want three decimal places. So y'all, let's hit enter. All right, y'all, so let's see. My first answer is one point uh, let's see, 744, four, right? Because that 4 has a 0 after it. So we keep it as a 4. So that's 1.744. Four. Yeah. That's our first approximation. Yeah. Now let's do that and change that adding to a subtraction. So I'm going to get my fraction again. Alpha green, Y equals, and enter. Uh, so what do we have? 7 minus square root, which is second x squared, 109. Then I'm going to arrow down to the bottom and put in my 10. So y'all, they look exactly the same, like I said, other than that plus or minus there, okay? So let's hit enter, and we're going three decimal places. So this would technically be like a negative 0. Point but I don't have to put the zero. So let's see. That's going to be uh, 0.344 again, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's a zero after that four. So negative 0.344. Yep. So it'll give you the exact answer you're putting in your radical. These over here are the approximations. And you'll put in like 1.744 comma negative 0.344, okay? All right, y'all. So that was pretty much 7.4. Now, I think there's one more that's almost like this one where you got to do the approximation and exact answers. Um, but what I'm going to get us started in is 4.8 next. Now, uh, 7.4 had, I think, six questions. This 4.8 only has four. So 4.8 deals with what we call applications. Which means word problems eventually, okay? Now, don't start out with word problems. But it starts out with graphs so that you can get used to the idea of one thing here, okay? Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to use the graph to find the x-intercepts of the graph. And the solutions of the equation. Now, before I draw my graph, let me give y'all one little thing here. The x value of the x-intercept
is equal to the solutions or zeros of the equation. And y'all, that's because what's the y value of those x-intercepts? Well, the y value of the x-intercepts is zero. Mm -hmm. So remember, we called them zeros for two reasons. Mm -hmm. We said our equation's equal to zero, and they're equal to the x value of the x-intercepts because those y values are zero for that, okay? So let's draw us a graph here. Now, this graph they're using, we're going to have uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. So this is another way, if you're weak at factoring, sometimes you can look at graphs because the x-intercepts always give you what we call the real solutions. Now, it won't work if they're imaginary because technically, when you got imaginary solutions, the graphs don't even cross the x-axis. They're up either high or below it. So the graph of this, let's draw our graph. And y'all, I need to go out about six on this. So there's five and six. Negative five, negative six. Positive five and six, and then left, same thing. Negative five, negative six. Now, the main thing is getting these points I'm about to get. So the first x-intercept is sitting over here. Right on what, that negative three? On the right side, it's sitting on the positive five. Now what it does is it sort of comes down and curves up. Now we don't really care about the shape. All we're worried about are these two points here, okay? So let me start out by finding the x-intercepts. Now, when you put these x-intercepts in, watch what I'm about to do on these. X-intercepts are points, so when we put them in math lab, we got to put them in our parentheses. So you're going to start your first parentheses for the first x-intercept here. Well, we know the x-value is what? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So the x-value is negative 3. What did we say the y-value was of this point? Zero. No. Well, think about it. Here, here's your y-axis right here. You start at 1, 2, 3 going up. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 going down, which means this is what? Zero. Okay. That's what it's like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember, when you write them in, you got to have your x value in a zero, comma. Then you put the next one in. Well, here it is right here. It's sitting on the 5. So that means that that one is five, zero. Now it'll say, hey, what are the solutions? So the solutions are X equals blank. Well, what I just say here, the X value of the X intercept is equal to the solutions of the equation. Well, I got two X values here, which means my first solution would be negative three my second solution would be positive five mm. so it's not bad if you got graphs to look at and you can actually see where they're crossing that x-axis at okay so y'all guess what you're going to have two of them doing this hiding the points putting them in there with the zeros and then the solutions okay so, y'all, I'm about to get us to the fun part of 4.8.
Ooh, and we get to break out another formula y'all should remember, hopefully. So y'all, let's go to the first example. Well, this will be like number three for 4.8. All right, y'all, check this out. A wire is stretched from the ground to the top of antenna tower. So I've got some kind of tower over here and I got this wire stretched to the top of it. Now they say, hey, the wire is 10 feet long. So now I know that that wire that's being stretched is 10 feet long. So y'all listen to this. The height of the tower is two feet greater than the distance D from the tower's base um, to the end of the wire. Okay. So guess what they want me to do? They want me to find that distance D. So we're find the distance D and the height of that tower. Okay, so I've got to find two things. The distance D, which is from the tower to the end of my wire on the ground, and then the height of that tower. How tall is my tower? Yeah. And y'all, the best way to do this kind of problem is draw you a picture. So let's draw a picture. Here's our tower. So I guess it's an antenna tower, so we'll draw an antenna or whatever. So some kind of antenna tower here. So we got this wire stretched from the ground to the top of that tower. And it's 10 feet long. Now, so tower, we know right now we got a 10 foot wire. Then it says the height of the tower is two feet greater than the distance D. Well, distance D is from the tower's base to the end of the wire. So right here's the base and the end of the wire. So this little distance right here is D. So they're saying the height of the tower is two feet greater than that distance D. Well, y'all, this is distance D. That means the height is D plus two. Y'all, yeah. when y'all set y'all's up, the only differences are going to be the 10 and that two sitting there, okay? Other than that, we're going to set them up the same way. They want you to realize that this is a 90 degree angle, which means that this is what we call a right triangle. Mm -hmm. A right triangle has a 90 degree angle. So do y'all remember a formula that you can use to solve for the sides of a right triangle? Answer. Oh, what y'all say? Hey, I was about to say rise of a run. But oh, I no, don't think about oh. slope. Think about, this, <laughs> think about this theorem we called it. That, and the theorem starts with a P. Is it the A squared plus B squared equals Pythagorean. C squared? Uh -huh. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I think I heard someone say it. I thought you used. Pythagorean.
There you go, the Pythagorean Pythagorean. theorem. So y'all look here, I'm breaking out the quadratic formula on you, the Pythagorean theorem on you. Good job, Kayla, good job. Okay, y'all, and y'all said that that was A squared plus B squared equaled C squared. Now, on this triangle, C is always the longest side. Y'all remember what y'all called that long side? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So this hypotenuse always has to be side C. Now, it don't matter who you make A and B down here. So I'm just going to go in order. A here, and I'll call that my B side. So I'm going to plug in for A, B, and C, knowing what I got here in my diagram. A was my D, so I'm going to have D squared. B is D plus 2, but y'all remember that D plus 2 is being squared, so it's in parentheses, and then C squared would be mm -hmm. N squared. Now, we're going to try to simplify this. Can't do nothing with that D squared at the moment. So that's just going to be D squared plus, uh-oh, look here. We're going to have to do side work on this one. So on the side, we're going to figure out D plus 2 squared. Now remember, when you got stuff being added or subtracted inside of parentheses, raised to an exponent, well, you better foil that. You got to write that twice. D plus 2 times D plus 2. The biggest mistake I get, people put D squared plus uh, 4 here. Mm. But watch. If you put D squared plus 4, you got part of it, but not all of it, okay? Okay. So let's see what goes there. D times D would be a D squared. D times 2 is 2D. 2 times D is another 2D. And you'll notice when you got a binomial being squared like this, these two terms in the middle will always match. And then y'all 2 times 2 gives me a 4. So all I'm going to do now is add like terms. This becomes a D squared. 2 plus 2 is 4D plus 4. D plus 2 squared with that. So D squared plus 4D plus 4. And on the right side, I figure out uh, 10 times 10. That's going to give us a 100 over there. So now we're going to play with this. The first thing, you got like terms on the left side. So the D squared plus the D squared gives me a 2D squared plus 4D plus 4 equals to 100. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to set it up for that quadratic formula we've been playing with. But if I'm going to use the quadratic formula, we need a different number over here. We kept having to set these equal to what? Zero. Zero. So to make that a zero, you're going to have to subtract 100 from both sides. So y'all, let's see what that does. That brings down our 2D squared plus our 4D. Oh, let's see. We got a 4 minus 100. That's what a negative, uh, well, 100 minus 4 is what, 96? Equal to... Zero. So guess what? We've got a zero over here. So let's find A, B, and C. Well, A is right here. It's a two. Mm -hmm. B is what, a uh, four? Yeah. Now look, that C's a little big. That's why we got calculators in this class. <laughs> but C's a negative 96, y'all. So now we're going to plug them into our formula. X equals negative B, which is 4, plus or minus square root. B squared would be 4 squared minus 4 
times A, which is 2, C, which is a negative 96, all of that over 2 times A, which is 2. So that's why when I do math a lot of times, I don't use the calculator when I got problems that ain't what I call word problems. But a lot of these word problems are dealing with the real world. And we're going to get big numbers in here. So that's why I don't mind having my calculator at times, okay? So that's going to stay negative 4. Plus or minus. So let's see what we're getting under here. 4 squared to be 4 times 4. So that'd be what? A mm -hmm. positive? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And y'all look at this side. Two negatives are going to make that side a positive. That's right. Woo, let's see. Negative four times two is negative eight. Mm -hmm. Woo, and I got a negative eight times a negative 96. Excellent. Oh, are y'all getting 768? Yeah. Negative eight times negative uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 96. Mm -hmm. So a positive 768 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So let's keep going. We're going to add the radical stuff now. So negative 4 plus or minus. All right, so that 768 plus 16 mm -hmm. is going to give me 784, all of that, over 4. Now I'm going to tell you all something. Since we're doing a word problem, this is a perfect square. Now, we don't go that high in Arkansas, apparently. But 784 <laughs> has a square root. <laughs> so if I want to find a square root of 784, I got a calculator sitting That's right wrong. here. <laughs> All right. So y'all watch this. Second square root, 784 is going to give us Ooh, 28. So 28 is now the square root of 784. Okay. All right, so remember, I would replace that with my 28. So negative 4 plus or minus 28 all over 4. Now, guess what? Won't both of these numbers divide by 4? Yep. So we're going to simplify that just a little bit more before we try to get them two answers. So negative 4 divided by 4 is a negative 1 plus or minus 28 divided by 4, which is 7. So let's get the first answer. The first answer, negative 1 plus 7. We all negative 1 plus 7 is a, what, a positive uh, 6. What about the second answer? That'll be negative 1 minus 7. And that gives me a negative 8. Yeah. You got two choices here. Which one of these are y'all going to pick as the answer to my D? Now, thank you. We're, we're in the real world now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to keep that negative answer, are we? No, that D no, can't be negative no. 8, can it? So, y'all, in the real world, when you're doing these problems, you got to kick out that negative answer. You got to go with the first one. You got to go with your positive answer. Good job. So, that means D is actually going to be 6. So, that's what we solved for. Well, if D is 6, how tall is my tower? Because let's see, right here's my tower. Whoops, I pulled it down. So here's my D, which was 6. Well, here's my tower, which is D plus 2. 8. And 6 plus 2 is definitely 8. Okay, y'all, so um, like I said, when I do the quad form, you know, and I'm dealing with the real world, and I got big numbers like 7, 68, let the calculator take that square root for you and bring that down to a 28, okay? All right, I got another word problem. Similar. Okay. All right, y'all. So y'all good on that one? Um, like I said, 
draw pictures. Easiest way to do it. And remember, D plus 2 squared is D squared plus 4D plus 4. Not just a D squared plus the 4, okay? Okay. Well, you got to love word problems, right? Hmm. All right, y'all, let's write this one down. So 4.8 is only four problems. Two were doing the x-intercept solution stuff, and two are word problems. So although it's four problems, it ain't just a cakewalk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. The foot of an extension ladder. is seven feet from a wall. Okay, so I got this ladder apparently leaning on a wall, and I know the foot of it is seven feet from the wall. Now, the height that the ladder reaches on the wall, so the height that the ladder Reaches on the wall and the length of the ladder are consecutive integers. Now they don't want everything. This time all they want to know is how long is the ladder? So how long is the ladder? Okay. So let me draw this one. So let's see. Over here I got a wall. And I've got this ladder leaning against it. Now, the only thing I know at the moment is that this foot of this ladder is seven feet from the wall. So this side right here, I know it's seven feet. Now, check this out. The height the ladder reaches on the wall over here and the length of this ladder are consecutive integers. What in the world are they talking about consecutive integers? Well, y'all check this out. Integers can be negative or positive. Integers are numbers like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. So consecutive integers would be like 2, 3. Okay. 3, 4. Two numbers in a row, okay? They come right in a row. Now, I don't know the first integer. So what would I put? Well, if I don't know what it, it's going to be, X, ain't it? Yeah. Now, if this ladder is a consecutive integer from that X, what can I put here? How are you going from one integer to the next? Plus one. Oh, I, I think I heard it. X plus one. X plus one, right? Yeah. That could be seven plus one is eight, nine plus one is 10 and so on, right? So when you see consecutive integers, it'll be X, X plus one. Now think about this. What if they just said consecutive even integers? How can you go from a two to a four? Well, that wouldn't be X plus one. It'd be X plus two. two. Mm -hmm. And the same with odd, right? From one to three and all that. Yeah. Um, but these were just consecutive, so x, x plus 1. And guess what we're going to use? We got another right triangle. So we get to play with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, I'm picky about c, remember? So c is this hypotenuse over here. So that's going to be my c this time. And then that'll be a and b. So replacing in, A is 7, so that's going to be 7 squared plus B, which is just the X, 
So that's going to be x squared. Oh, but here's one of them x plus ones again. So that's going to be x plus one squared. Now y'all check this out. When y'all set this one up, y'all's only difference will be the seven. Mm -hmm. Y'all's consecutive integers are going to be the same as my consecutive integers. So the only difference between y'all and me is going to be that seven there, okay? Now, some of y'all might get lucky and get to seven. Depends on that math lab. All right, y'all, seven squared. Seven. Plus my x squared. Can't do nothing else over there, but now on the side, I'm going to figure out what an x plus one squared is. So write that twice. So it looks like no matter what, y'all got to do a little foiling tonight, right? All right, y'all. X times X is X squared. X times 1 is 1X. Then this 1 times X is 1X. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So notice, once again, I got the same two things in the middle. So I got an X squared. 1 plus 1 is 2x plus that 1. So we can replace the right side with that. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, we're at that point again. If this is going to be quadratic, and I'm going to solve it by the quadratic formula, on one side I need a big O 0, okay? Yeah. So let's start out moving these x squareds and see what happens. I'm going to put all the x squareds over here because I got a lot more stuff than I do on this side. Oh, y'all, look what's happening here. If I subtract x squared from here to move it, oh, look what's happening over there. It looks like the x squareds are canceling out everywhere, don't it? Yeah. Those are canceling, and those are canceling. All that's left on the left side is the 49. That's going to equal, well, all that's left on the right side is a 2x plus 1. Yep. So guess what? I don't get to use the quadratic formula, sadly, because this one's not quadratic no more. So this is not quadratic anymore. Since it's not quadratic, just solve for x. Because there's no x squared terms. So y'all, in two moves, we can solve for that x. First of all, we're going to take that 1 and subtract it from both sides. So it's sort of nice on this one, since the x squared's all canceled out, you're just going to end up with a simple equation. Um, so I'm subtracting 1. That's going to give me 48 equals 2x. Now, check this out. The only difference on y'all is going to be that 49. Y'all still have a 2x plus 1 like I did. Yeah. The only thing is your 49 will be a little different, okay? And then let's see. I got 2x here, so let's divide by 2. So 48 divided by 2 gives me 24 equal to my x. So the question of the day, how long does that matter? Well, 24 plus 1, 24. Uh -huh. So that's going to give us 25. 25. So remember, this X was 24. Add 1 and make that side 25, okay? Yes. So, y'all, it's not real bad. The trick on word problems to me is setting them up and seeing what you got there. Yeah. <laughs> Now, y'all, um, I'm only going to show y'all a couple problems out of 4.8 support because the foiling stuff, it's just doing like we did here, foiling. So let me, but there's some that are sort of tricky for you. So let me see. So this is support for 4.8. Um, and there's one question right here. Now, the first two are just foiling. But this question, let's see what this one is. 
it says the number zero is never a solution of a quadratic equation. True or false? Well, guess what? Zero can be a solution of a quadratic equation. So that is definitely false. And y'all, the reason this would be false, and you'll have to sort of give your explanation, but it's false because if zero is plugged into the equation, and a true statement results, then that means then zero is a solution. Actually, any number can be a solution of a quadratic equation, okay? So the number zero can be a solution. So this is false because of the never, and then that's why, okay? Now, the reason I wanted to show you that because the next problem they want us to solve C squared plus 4C equals 0. Now, y'all guess what? I've been showing you the quadratic formula all day long. Yeah. Um, now, you can solve this by factoring. The way you would solve this by factoring is factor out the greatest common factor, which would be that C. Um, but since we're playing with the quad all day long, I'm going to show you this on the quad. Now, I see two numbers. I got a one for my A. B will definitely be four because it's in front of the variable. There's no number at the end. So when there's not a number, it means that C is zero, okay? Mm -hmm. So whatever's missing, if something's missing, it becomes a zero. Now remember, this ain't the number. This is the second place with the variable. C squared and then the C, okay? So let me plug them in since I've been showing y'all the quad all day. So negative B, which is a four, plus or minus square root, B squared will be four squared minus four times A, which is one, C, which is zero, all of that over two times one. Okay, so that's gonna be negative four plus or minus we all look what's happening under here. Four squared is 16. All this is getting multiplied. Well, that's just going to be minus a big what? Zero times zero. anything. That's a big zero, zero right? Mm -hmm. All over two times one, which is two. So simplifying that, I get negative four plus or minus mm -hmm. square root of 16. Mm -hmm over two. All right, y'all, what's square root of 16? 16 is a perfect square. Sure. Uh -huh, so that'd be four all over two. Guess what? We can simplify these because both these numbers will divide by two. So negative four divided by two will give you a negative two plus or minus four divided by two, which is two. Yeah. So my first answer, well, that'll be negative two plus two. Oh, and look at that. Negative two plus two is zero. Mm -hmm. Well, zero squared is zero. Four times zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Mm -hmm. So it can be a true solution. And then my second answer on this 
Well, that'll be negative two minus two. And that'd be what a negative uh four. four. Okay, so in math lab, it'll have something like C equals, and we'll just put in our zero and negative four. Now, y'all, there's one one more I want to show you. Um, now the reason I wanted to do three and four is to show that y'all could see that zero can be solutions. Okay. Um. So the last one I'm going to show y'all is like y'all's number five. And it says solve a squared equals one. Now I'm going to say this one. This might be the only one where I don't do the quad two. Because the quad is so much more work when you just got a variable squared equal to a number. I don't know if y'all remember when we did the inverse functions. Mm -hmm. But if I want to undo exponents, I take square roots. So on this one, it might be easiest to just solve by taking square roots. So square root of a squared equals the square root of one. Well, y'all, what's the square root of a squared? Remember, that exponent cancels that radical, leaving the a. But y'all, the question is now, what's the square root of one? Hmm. Oh, what'd y'all just say? One. One. One, that's one of them. <laughs> But remember, when I take square roots, I need to use a plus or a minus. minus. So that means plus one, which is one times one, is one. But ain't a negative one times a negative one equal a plus one. One also, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, for this one, a will actually equal a one and a negative one. Remember, y'all, when you see exponents of two, that two is telling me I got to get two answers, okay? Oh, okay. So, so always account for when you're solving equations, account for the plus and minus square roots. Now, if I'm just asking someone, hey, what's the square root of one? I'm just going to say one. But if I'm in an equation, I got to use both answers. Now, y'all, this one we're not going to work. I just wanted to show you how to set it up. Okay. Because this one says solve by quadratic formula. Which was the theme of the day. But y'all, the trick on this one, look what they're giving me. They're giving me 32 plus 4B minus B squared equals zero. Now, this thing's all out of the wrong order. So the first thing you do, put this thing in order. That B squared has to be first, and it's negative. So that's going to be a negative B squared. Then you put the B, which is what, a positive 4B. Yeah. And then that positive 32. All equal to zero. All equal to zero. And y'all, I'm going to tell you another trick. I would get rid of this negative in front of that B squared. Okay. I would make this positive. If you keep it negative, it's going to make your answers hard to cipher out at the end, okay? okay. So first, we're rearranging it right here. And then we're going to divide everybody, everybody, by negative 1. Because we always want this to be positive. So negative B squared. Now, the reason I can divide by negative 1 is because... I'm doing that to both sides, right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing it here and I'm doing it on that side. But it's not changing the right side, is it? You still got a zero divided by negative one, which is going to make that side a zero still. But what it does over here, when you divide everybody by negative one, it changes all the signs. So that that's now a positive B squared minus the 4B minus 32. At that point, you can then figure out A, B, 
and C, okay? Mm -hmm. It makes it harder if you keep the A negative because it's on the bottom of your fraction because that negative, that uh, two A down there. So that's one thing I always do is try to get them in the right order. And then A would be one, B would be negative four, and then C would be that negative 32. At that point, plug them in and get you an answer, okay? Mm -hmm. So y'all guess what? After tonight or tomorrow, whenever y'all do homework, you'll be good at your quadratic formula, okay? okay. Now notice, we didn't do that many problems, but they're short and long, right? <laughs> and we, yeah, didn't even solve, <laughs> we didn't even solve this one yet. We just put it in the right order. <laughs> So then you would have your X equals negative B, blah, blah, blah. That'd go down a little ways. Um, but y'all, knowing this quadratic formula and Pythagorean theorem, that stuff's going to help you later if you got to take science classes like physics. Uh, oh, what's it? Physical science, stuff like that. Some of y'all nurses and stuff might have to take. Uh People that are being engineers and stuff, you definitely want to know how to do the quadratic formula and Pythagorean theorem. So, y'all, I think I'm about talked out, so I'm going to stop my share. And I'll stop our video so I can get that out later.